I want you to understand. Have you read the Bible? Yeah. You, you, you. Yeah. Yeah. You did once? Okay. Good. And you? No. Okay. How many of you all have read the Bible? And how many of you have done great things for the Lord? God bless you. You know the word is so mighty and powerful. I was sharing that yesterday. Uh, that what we have and what the world doesn't have is the word of God. You know, it's the word that is everything in our lives. And uh, you know that, what is that boy's name? Who was... Uh, Daniel. Huh? Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, right? The little one? Yeah. Oh, he is awesome. <laughs> he is. God bless you, Daniel. God bless you. You know, that's one, those are one of my favorite verses I was, uh, I, I was very fond of. In the beginning, in the beginning was? The word. The word. <laughs> you know, Adi and the Vakyamu, Devuni and the Vakyamu, Vakyamu, Devuni. You know, it is such a beautiful word that we have the privilege and opportunity to speak the word of God. And to do great things by that word. Anyways, uh, chapter 16, and uh, yes. And say, Thus said the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. You know, uh, this verse is so true to my life because I was born to a Hindu father. Uh, my father was a Tamil Brahmin and the mother was a British lady. She was of British origin and she's blonde. Yeah, but when you look at me, I, I just don't resemble any British, you know, blood or anything. I've take, totally taken up on my father's genes. Uh, yeah, uh, so they were in love. Um, I'll get to that subject love later. Um, you know, this is a very important uh, thing. How many of you are not married here? Not married? Uh, you kids, come on. <laughs> you have a long way to go. <laughs> Alright. Um, you know, uh, I always say that my testimony is based on few things. One is forgiveness. One is love and hope, compassion. You know, these things are so important in everybody's life. When you don't have love, believe me, you cannot survive in this world. When you don't have forgiveness in this world, oh boy, it's the most difficult place to live in. And when there's no hope, it's the end of the world. You know, and when there's no compassion, you just feel like dying. You know, I experienced all these things in my life from a very young age. You know, when my mom decided to marry my father, she made the biggest blunder by not asking God. She made her own choices. She just said, oh, okay. You know, it doesn't matter if I don't ask God whether should I marry this man or he's the right man in my life. It's okay. You know, I know, I know. I know him pretty well. Oh, I've been dating him for so long. I know him. But she was wrong. She was absolutely wrong. And she paid the price. You know, she went all against her family. She left her family for this man. And she got married to him. Boy, she, she took a brave step. But it was a wrong step in her life, in her career. You know, when she got married, the first few months were very nice. Because, oh, my, my, my man, you know, my life is with me, you know, all that I wanted is with me. You know, I'm so happy I found the man that I love. But as days passed by, she was so disappointed with my father. You know, he was the most abusive man. And she was in a state of shock. Because these things were not told to her. These things were not revealed to her. 
before her marriage. She married him and she came to know later that this guy is a womanizer, is an adulterer, is an alcoholic. Oh man, you name everything in the Bible that a man should not do, my father did. And I'm sure somewhere down the line she must have cried her heart to God and said, God, I'm sorry. But God said, it's too late, daughter. It's too late. You made a choice without asking me. You made a choice. I was always there for you, but you ignored my word. You never had the time and patience to call on me and wait on me. You know, by the time my mother had two kids and I was the third one coming in. I have two older siblings, two sisters. But uh, the whole process for her was very painful. You know, I still remember some incidents when I was pretty young. When uh, my father would bring another woman to the house. You know, all these things my family keep discussing and they keep talking about. And uh, he would do nasty things in front of my mother. And that poor woman, he's saying, she's saying, you know, I have left my all for you for this day. I have trusted you. I have hoped in you. I have believed in everything that you have told me before marriage. And this is what you pay me back in return. She suffered. She cried. She went through a lot of pain. She was abused day in and day out. She was beaten up black and blue. She went to hell. You know, she went to hell. One choice that she made changed her whole life. She paid such a big price for that one choice that she made in her life. Boy, that was a big choice she made. And that's why I always tell all you youngsters, when you make choices in life, please, please don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a rush. Wait on the Lord. Hear what God has to say about your choices. Wait on God. It's always worth waiting on God. You know, my mom paid a big price. With all the pain that she endured, she felt sick. She was traumatized, you know. I still remember an incident where my father, you know, was so drunk and he'd come and say, I want more money to drink. And she would say, no, I'm not giving you any money. And uh, he was beating her so much, she went out. And he chased her on the streets with a belt, and we were running behind my mother. Boy, what a sight for any child to see. What a sight it was, I'm telling you. That poor woman, I'm glad she was no more. I don't know how much more she would have suffered if she would have been alive. She died of cancer. I was about five years old when my mom passed away. I was pretty young. And uh, I, I always like, you know, most of the time when, uh, until I got really close to God, and uh, I used to always say, God, you know, why me? I always longed for motherly affection. I always wanted to have a mother. Every time I used to go to my friend's place and see that mother holding their children, you know, and I used to cry and say, God, why me? I want my mother back. You know, I, I prayed. This was my prayer to God. God, I want my mother back. I prayed for so many years for this prayer. I said, God, I want my mom. But, well, you know, once it's gone, it's gone. That's why I'm telling you, when you have it, you cherish it. You hold on to it. Don't waste the opportunity that you have. For all you children you, who have mothers and fathers, Believe me, you have the best blessing on this earth. The best blessing in this world that you could ever ask for is your mother and father. For without which you wouldn't have been what you are today. You know? So, I've never experienced the affection of a mother. And I always, I still long, you know that? I'm married, yeah, but I still long for an affection. I'd love to be by my mother and experience that love. I miss all those things, all you children are experiencing today. You know, all that great affection that you people are enjoying. Man, you are blessed. God bless you all. Thank you. Uh, so she passed away, and then my dad, he took us, I was born in Vizac, and uh, we moved from Vizac 
to Hyderabad to live with my daddy's brother, his elder brother. And uh, he left us at his brother's place and uh, he moved to Muscat uh, because he found a new job there and uh, he wanted to start a new living. So uh, we were too young so we, we would not know, you know, uh, whether that was the right choice or not my father made. But uh, that taught us a lot in life. When we landed at my father's brother's place, we experienced, uh, you know, what it is being disowned. I have a family and yet I don't. I have relatives, but I have no love, no compassion. You know, I always say this, Santa Vidalu, Santa Vidalu, Santa Vidalu, Parai Vidalu, Parai Vidalu. Kani, Devudu Yattu Dopa Vadaante, Manalanti Parai Vidalu, and Santa 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 Vidalu. Hallelujah. You know, it's such a wonderful God. You know, I've always felt like a stranger in my father's brother's house. Me and my sisters, you we were we were humiliated. We were we went through so much of pain, so much of humiliation. You know, there were times, you know, when as soon as their children come, obviously the first preference is given to their children and later to us. They would eat first and then we would eat later. There were so many things like this that you know we experienced and never we experienced any affection from them. Never. And as years passed by, things got so bitter, there are certain things that I can't talk about. But uh, yeah, things went out of hand and then I called up my father and I said, Dad, uh, I was 13. And I said, Dad, please come back, we need you here. This is the time we need you the most. So my dad uh, finally agreed to come back from Muscat to Hyderabad and uh, live with us. So he found a job, he came back. We were all excited. Janilga, Nanagari, Tanri Hindu Vasanarande, Bridal Kelka, Santosha Mama. You know, it's, it's a very happy occasion when a father has gone for a long time and he's coming back home. The children are really excited. We were so happy. You know, this humiliation, this pain and everything that we are experiencing is not going to be there any longer. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I was mistaken. We went through more hum humiliation and pain after my father came back from, from uh, Moscow. Every day, there was not a single day that we were not beaten up. He was drunk every day. He would just go off, take off. We would never know when he would come back home. And somebody would come and say, Are me nanagar, me tagi padi You know, they, these are the sights that I saw when I, when I was a young boy. It was such a painful experience for me. And sometimes, you know, I say, God, I don't know why you have to put us through all this. But I'm glad you put us through all this. He taught me life through all this pain that I experienced. So, you know, there were so many Christians in our neighborhood. And this is the most interesting part of my testimony. There were so many Christians in our neighborhood in Hyderabad that we used to live. There was not one man who came and gave the word of God to my father. Because they were all so busy with their lives. They had no time. You know, I always say, God, if today my father was alive and he would have still been in this situation, what you have done to me today, I would have done. I would have given that same joy and happiness to my father. You know, the word changed my life for eternity. Why it's not for a day or two. I'm saved. And I'm enjoying your salvation. My father could not enjoy it. Because there was nobody to come and give him salvation, to give him the word of God. Everybody was so busy. And you know, that it is such an irony that, you know, these people, every time my father used to drink or he used to beat us, he, they used to always say, like, look at that family. And these are Christians. Mind that I'm talking about. Forget the ones who don't know God, but I'm talking about our people. You know, our own people put us through so much of pain. And I said, God, if your people do not have compassion and love, who else in this world would have it? If I can't find it among your people, where can I go? It was so traumatic, you know. We were, we were always discarded. We were always, you know, we never had friends because Oh, their father's a drunkard. Even friends were denied in my life. I could not go to anybody's house. I could not do normal things like any of you young children are doing today. 
I paid a big price. And all this is one decision that my mother took. One decision. That decision is with that God. You pay a price when you, when, you, when you think, oh, you're capable of doing everything and you don't need God, mind it, you're digging your own grave here. You're digging your own grave. So my father drank to death. He drank so much that it took his life away. And uh, it was all so sudden. We never had an opportunity to talk about anything to my father because he was always drunk. We could not share any happy moments, moments with my father. Man, I missed so much of my life with family. I never had this privilege, most of you that are sitting here and enjoying. Be thankful to God and to your parents for what they have given you, I'm telling you. Be thankful to each one of them. And I know the pain of not having a mother and a father in my life. And I know how the world treats you when you don't have family. Oh, it's so humiliating, trust me. You know, when my father died, we didn't know what to do. It was all so sudden and uh, there was nobody. We tried to reach the family. Neither his mother, neither his brothers, or neither my family came to see him. Three of us sitting there by his dead body, we just don't know what to do. I'm just lying there and I'm just wondering, God, what next? What next, God? And then suddenly I remember my teacher, who's a Christian lady, I ran, I ran up to her place and I said, Teacher, you know, my father died and we don't know what to do now. So she came home, she did most of the things that needed to be organized. And she said, what do you want to do now? I used to remember my dad telling me when he used to be drunk, he said, Nana, I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to go to the church. I say, I'm going to go to the church. You know, if you go away, who else is there for us? You're the only hope we have. I said, Dad, please don't say these things. It hurts. You know, you're the only hope that we have. No lack of the way my father. There's nobody to take care of us. Mom left the family. The family is not with us. You are not with your family. We have nobody but you. And if you go away, don't say these words, Father. You know, it, it, it was a lot of painful experiences. You know, when my father was drunk, old man, boy, things that he used to say. So he died, and I remembered these words that he wanted to be buried and not cremated. And I told my teacher and she said, okay, why don't you go to the church and ask the pastor? And it was a Sunday. And I ran, me and my sisters, barefoot, from our house to the church. It's about 15 minutes away. We just ran to the church. And we said, pastor, my dad passed away. We would require some place for his body. You know, the first thing the pastor asked me, what denomination does your father belong to? <coughs> I said, what? Is he a Catholic? Is he a Baptist? Is he this one? Is he that one? I said, no, my father is a Hindu. My father does not belong to any denomination. He's just a man who died. And we need some place for his burial because that was his last wish. And you know, it's not one, one denomination that I went to plead. I went to so many places. Believe me, this is the truth I speak in the presence of God. Pastor Lakhal Patkuna and We were crying and saying, please, this is my father's last wish. Give us some place, we will give you money. He just wants to be buried. But everybody shut their doors. There was not a single man who had come back. No love, no forgiveness, nothing. We came back home and we said, God, what kind of a world are we living in? What kind of a world are we living in? Are you need manshile ilaunte? Baitawala la pravartisna nukunin vada padakle. And I'm really not feeling bad that people who don't know you are asking that way. Because your own kind are acting this way. 
So it was a very bitter experience in my life. It was a very painful experience in my life. So as uh, night came, uh, my teacher said, you know, we can't keep the body for too long. You have to do something. So my fucking daughter, there was a Hindu family. Uh, they, they spoke to some Pujari and uh, they took us to the uh, Smashana Vatika, right? That's the right word, right? Smashana Vatika. Akkadi Kutti scale and we took my uh, father's body to the, to the you know, cremation ground and uh, they just started loading up everything onto my father, piling all that wood and I was standing there and I said, God, no, no God, I don't want to be a part of this. And that man comes, Achetro Nandu, a kagad is that he gives me the torch and he says, where do you father? And I said, no, I can't. I can't see my father word and I don't want to be the one who's going to my father. I said, I can't. This is the most traumatic thing any child or anybody can experience. I just put my foot down and I said, you know, Yella Yindi Kachmanta Vuna, Tandre Yindi. Are you a Kalibo Kroten in Chustu Nunchalini? I pleaded with him and I said, please don't allow me to do this. I said, Nin Chayden, I can't do this. I can't burn my father's body. So, so that guy, he took the torch and he, he lit. And I was just standing there and, and I saw my father turn to ashes. And I said, wow, man, what, what kind of a world we're living in? You know, I came back home and I was so bitter. I was so bitter and I said, never again, God, I would ever speak to a Christian or to a pastor or whatever I would step into a church. Never again. I don't want to be a part of it. I was very bitter, I was very angry. I had this grudge. This, I was so, you know, I, I just thought, you know, I just felt like doing something nasty. But as years passed by, as a couple of, you know, my, my uh, after both this whole incident, my mother's sister uh, came down from Vishakhapatnam. She took us back to Wysak. And for a minute I thought, okay, probably somebody has compassion. Um, so we, 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 we were a little happy, we rejoiced uh, that, you know, okay, somebody from my mother's family at least has come forward uh, to support us. But when we went back to Wysak, it's the same one story. Santa Vita, Santa Vita, Parai Vita, Parai Vita. Apne to apne hote hai, Parai Vita, Parai Vita. You know, so they said so many nasty things to us. You know, when we used to eat food, they used to say things like Surandi, Pandula, You know, they're eating like pigs. So many nasty things were told to us. You know, my own family, my blood is talking to us like this. I was amazed. I was amazed that people in your own blood can be so vicious, so unforgiving, so ruthless, uncompassionate. Oh, so Madhigra, double nantavarku, ma kam me, everything was fine. And as soon as we were done with our money, we were asked to go out. Three children in their teens on the road, having no money having no shelter, having no help. You know, what a frightful world this is. You know, my four sisters, oh man, uh, they had a couple of gold on them. We went and we sold it, we got some money. We found a place, temporary place, one room, one bathroom, a small little place that we rented out. And we started, uh, you know, our livelihood. And uh, we were all seeking for jobs because it was really difficult. We had no money. I'm telling you, zero. Zero money we had when we were left out of the streets to live our own lives. Because we became a burden to this world and to our family. We started understanding what real life is in this world. So the minute we stepped out 
and I started finding jobs. You know, I used to I used to work for a company called Ekno, which used to market air curtains. Do you know what air curtains are? Like when you go into these malls, you have these blowers, you know, to stop the air conditioning from going out or the hot air from coming in. So I used to market those, and I used to be paid 400 rupees a month. And uh, my sisters, I'm telling you, this world is so mean, especially when women are alone without a father figure. Oh, believe me, it is the worst thing a woman can experience. You know, intiki pedo di kulak pote ya word maria di chale di arbitre. I'm telling you, all you children, you are what you are because of your surname. If that surname is taken away from you, believe me, you are nothing. You are nothing without your father's name. People identify you because of your father's name. Miku pelilu jarutai because of your father's name. Everything happens because of your father's name. And that's why I'm telling you, cherish what you have. You have to be thankful for what they have done to you. You have to be ever thankful all the days of your life. Till they are alive, you have to be thankful. I never had the opportunity to thank my father and mother. But you have. And don't waste it, please. You know, so my sisters started looking out for jobs. They used to go to different companies. Interview when somebody used to interview them, the boss or the so-called CEO or the MD of the company, the first thing they ask is, what does your mother and father do? That's the very first question. What is your background? Indian only is very a common thing of asking, you know, your family background, no matter what. The minute my sisters used to say that, oh, we don't have family, I lost my mother and father, that man's thought process used to change like that. And then, you know, he was so nasty. He used to just, you know, <coughs> he knows now nobody can do anything to me. You know, these children don't have any backing. So I, even if I say anything, I can just, you know, get out of the situation. So what do you just sleep with me one night. Why do you want to work so hard? I'll take care of you. You're young, you're beautiful. You know, you could be with me. I'll pay you every month. And these are the kind of people my sisters encounter. Everywhere they went, you know, there was no love, there was no forgiveness, there was no hope, there was no compassion. They were like vultures, these men waiting outside to just tear them apart. They used to come home and they used to cry and cry and cry and say, you know, what kind of people are these people? We are trying to make a living. An honest living, but why the world is not allowing us? Everywhere they go, you know, even when they used to, even after they got jobs, their employees used to misbehave with them. We never had anybody to complain to. You know, once when we went to the police station to complain, that police officer was so nasty to my sisters. He called them prostitutes. Man, I just wanted to take his gun and shoot him right there. God forbid, God forgive me for these words, but this is the feeling that I had right there. Yalla pratutuna remiru, tali tantrule lakuta. These are the words he used. This was the word I saw. This was the word I experienced. This was the pain we were enduring. You know, sometimes we just wanted to take off and go. And relax. We used to walk down the beach in Vaisak, and there was this huge group of young boys there. You know, they used to say such nasty things to my sisters. And I was this little thin, scrawny, short guy. They were ten guys, and believe me, I wanted to beat the hell out of everybody of what they said. You know, I used to just say, God, I am so helpless. I am not able to protect my family, my sisters. I can't take this pain in love to God. Why these people have to comment and say such nasty things about my sisters? 
what have they done? You know, man, it was a traumatic experience. I was literally broken, shattered to pieces. So then I decided, God, this is enough. I do not want to continue with this life. You have shown me what life is all about and I thank you God. I have had the best experience in my life and I don't want this experience to last any longer because I am not in a state to endure any more pain, any more shame or any more humiliation God. This is it. And then we went home, all the three of us. And then we, we all just said, okay, what do you want to do? Then we decided, okay, let's kill ourselves. We just decided to kill ourselves because the world, the society, the family, they drove us to the edge. They drove us to the edge. Believe me, we had nowhere to go to. We were cornered from everywhere. And we thought death is the only way out. Death is the only way out. So we all just consumed pesticide. And uh, we were in the hospital. Our neighbors just happened to notice that we were like, you know, shouting in pain with all this poison in our bodies. They just rushed us to the hospital. So, something wonderful happened when we were there. I'll tell you what it is, you know. My whole testimony is from the Bible. I always prayed and I said, God, I am not your name. Cinema Kadalu, Kattu Kadalu, Chapta, Nuala, Kleru. Me, Sakshya, Panchkota, I am going to testify God that how great you are. And it has to be from the word of God. So everything that I am speaking is from the Bible. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou wast born, thy navel was not cut. Tell you in the Bible, Ni Navi Sutra Mu Koya Vada Ledu. Navi Sutra Mu Koya Vada Ledu. I was still in bondage. That cord was not cut. My mother brought all that bondage not only to herself but to her children. One decision of hers. Neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all nor swaddled at all. None I pitied thee. Katakshimpaledu mamali. To do any of these unto you, to have compassion upon thee. But thou wast cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou wast born. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, listen carefully. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, Live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. Raktamula Kuruchuna, Mamali Chusi, Yehova, Okamata Salavich, Bratukuan. We were kicking in our blood. We were like in a death situation. I was in coma for four days. I was hospitalized for 14 days because I was affected the most. And uh, I thank God that he brought me out of this, he brought my sisters out of this whole ordeal. Because he had a purpose. He had a purpose for this day. You know, he had a, God always has a purpose for each one of us. Don't lose hope. Don't give up hope. Fight the good fight, no matter what. God is always with you. I always believe in that verse. Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And believe me, God is always there, no matter, even if you're walking in the valley of the shadow of death. He was with me and my sisters when we were enduring this situation. And once when God said, live, our whole life transformed. So we came out of the hospital with a couple of people's help. And uh, there was a family called Peter and Lydia, husband and wife, who were very faithful people, who were very godly people, who used to preach the gospel. So they came knocking at our door and uh, they said, uh, we would like to talk to you. So the minute we welcomed them into our house, 
we received our salvation. We received our salvation. That is the first time I celebrated Christmas. You know why? Because Christ came into my life. So how many people are celebrating Christmas? Not many people. Because there's still so many people who do not have Christ. And we are all re getting ready for our celebrations for another Christmas. But there are people who are dying of pain, who are committing suicides, who are, who are orphans, who are suffering, who are being tormented, who are being abused, and we are celebrating Christmas. What a Christmas. What a way to celebrate Christmas, right? And that is when I, I realized the importance of Christmas. Christmas is not celebration, but Christmas is giving Jesus Christ to somebody. I think probably this Christmas, we would all give Jesus Christ to somebody and celebrate Christmas with them. So, I was so happy when the Word came into my life, when salvation came to my sisters and me, our whole life transformed. And God started doing great miracles in our life. During, during this whole process, our faith grew so much in God that I, I just wanted to dedicate my life to God. And at the age of 16, I wanted to become a pastor. At the age of 16, I just wanted to leave everything and serve God. But I had my own share of you know, problems to deal with, my career, my sisters, their marriage, so many responsibilities on my shoulder. So I had to put those plans behind and I had to move on in life and I said, God, and I know when the time is right, you will call me back. So then all of a sudden there was this uh, advertisement in a paper uh, for a job in Lufthansa. Uh, so I just applied and uh, I got called for the interview and when I got called for the interview, uh, I came to know that there were 3,500 applicants who were selected for the interview. And after the interviews were done, I just get a call and that door on a Sunday morning, 7 a.m. in the morning, and they said, you're a through boss. You got the job. And I rejoiced so much. And when I went back to sign my contract, that man told me, you know how fortunate you are? You know how many people have been selected all over this country? Four men, and you're one of them. And I said, all glory to God. You know, with God, all things are possible. You need to just hold on. God never fails. He never failed us. Believe me, the minute Christ came into our lives, trust me, when I came to know salvation, when I experienced His salvation, His love, His word, His truth, our whole life changed. And I start, when I started dwelling on the word of God and meditating on the word of God and reminding God of His word and His promises, great things happened in our lives, in my family's life. I got a job. I moved to Germany. I was there for two years. I got my sister married. You know, there was a, there was a time. How many are from Vishakavatnam here? I saw some hands. You know Daspala Hotel, right? In those days, Daspala was a very big hotel. And I used to always long for having food there with my sisters. It was very expensive for me in those days. And uh, you know, God is so great that in that same hotel, in that same hotel, I you know, we celebrated my sister's wedding in the same hotel where I could not afford and we gave food to 500 people. You know, God is such a mighty God. He knows every desire of your heart. He fulfills every desire of your heart. Trust me, He is the most loving God you will ever find in your life. There is none like Him in this world. Anywhere I tell you, there is none like Jesus Christ. What a mighty God. What a Savior He is. And what a sacrifice he's given me and my family. You know, and so when all things started falling in place, uh, my life started, you know, it was never coming down. When I received Jesus Christ into my life, I never took a step back. I always took a step ahead in my life. Always move up, up, up and up. I wanted to go into movies and God took me into the film industry. Maybe he had a purpose even for that. And today I realize that purpose. They need salvation more than anybody today. The film industry, believe me. Oh, there is so much darkness in that area. And I thank God for picking me there and putting me in the midst of them, you know, to give them the gospel. 
you people need to pray more for the faith industry. You know, there's so many lives that I know are just going to waste. They all need the word, they need your prayer support. So, my sisters got married, uh, one sister has a son, one sister has a daughter. They're all doing pretty well. Uh, I became a movie star and uh, I've made so much money. You know, I used to earn 40,000 then. You know, when I started, uh, when I got a very big break, uh, my film Anand, as you all know, uh, after that movie, I just jacked up my price to 40 lakhs per film. You know, it's huge money, 40,000 ekada nalu bai laksha So, 400, 40,000, 40 lakhs. You know how God has held me and taken me to these heights? You know, God, once you just say, God, I believe, He will never let you down. He will never fail you. That's why I say, if you have anything that you are just trying to sort things out, you know, ask God. Don't deal it by yourself. God is always there. He is ready to help you no matter what. He is ready to lead and guide you, strengthen you. Oh, He's a mighty God. You know, so just hold on to God. The way He has brought me out from my death, my sisters from their death, from their shame, from their pain, from our sufferings, from that humiliation. And look where God has placed us. You know, today, the same people who humiliated us, who said such nasty things, they are our best friends. Are pillar and a villa wonder. Look at this world. Such hypocrisy. Such hypocrisy. You know, they the same people today are my friends who said nasty things. I forgive them. I forgive you. I forgive everybody who said all those things. I don't hold anything against anybody. You know, that is the reason I'm so happy in my life. I forgive my family. I forgive all my friends. All the people who have been so bad to us. I said, God, if you could forgive me for all the nasty things, who am I to hold anything against anybody? And believe me, it made my life so simple. It made my life worth living. Oh, I enjoy life today. I am the most happiest man. And I mean it, I'm the most happiest man. You can see that smile, right? <laughs> and I mean it when I say I'm the most happiest man. Because God has taught me forgiveness. And I thank God, you know, for not, um, you know, I thank God for helping me get out of all this bitterness and all that hatred that I always had for my people. Uh, you know, it is just amazing how God spoke to me one day. Almost uh, 10 to 12 years throughout that, I just went to a church after 10 to 12 years and that too I was forced by a friend. And uh, I was sitting in the church and I heard the voice of God speak to me. I said, Stop. Why did it take you so long? Why did it take you so long to come? I said, God, you know what happened. You know how mean your, your people were. You know how mean you were. He said, son, what are you talking When I died, I never had a place. Is your father mightier than I am? I said, no, God. I'm so sorry. That one word changed my life. When I heard the voice of God, I said, God, I'm sorry. And I asked for forgiveness for all your, from all your children, from all the pastors, from everybody. And I said, God, I'm so sorry for holding this against me. Jesus Christ never had a place for his body. My dad is not greater than God. And it was just so instantaneous, you know. God speaks to you and you have to change. When the word of God touches you, believe me, oh, it is the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to anybody. So that is what I'm telling you. Today I am what I am. It's not because of anything, but it is because of the word of God. It is only this that we have, that we should treasure, we should cherish. Because once this is taken away from us, believe me, we will miss it. We would be helpless. We would be lost without hope. So you have the greatest weapon in your hands, the Word of God. Hold on to it. Meditate on the Word. Read the Bible. This is just not an ordinary book, my dear brothers and sisters. This is not an ordinary book. Every time I claim, every time I confessed the word of God and every time I reminded God His word, He was faithful, He was just. And I said, God, You promised. 
There's a beautiful verse I always share in every meeting that I go to. Can you all take out your Bibles and go to Numbers 23 and verse 19? good on time? Can anybody just say, can you shut up and go down? Yeah, please. Yeah. Numbers 23 and 19. What does it say? God is not a man that he should lie. Or a son of man that he should repent. As he said, and will he not do? See, now Telugu, under Telugu, maybe 90% understand Telugu. Those who understand Telugu, let them hear that. Only the kids, some of the kids that don't understand. Oh, I'll just say yes. this verse in Telugu. Yeah. Devudu abadha madataku manavudu kaadu. Paschata abu padataku narakuthudu kaadu. Ayana chetri chayi kundana, ayana mata ichi stapu kundana. You know, when God says, when God gives you a word, He means it. And today God is speaking to all of you. He says, Son, hold my word and ask me anything and I will give it to you. Where does it say? In which chapter that? John 14, 16, learn to 14, 16. Are we there? Yeah. And I'll ask the Father. And no, you, you are sorry, John 14, 13. 13 and 14. John, 13, John 14, where's 13 and 14? I will do whatever he has in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in his son. If in my name he does not do anything, I will do it. What a promise. Devudu, Abadha Madhukku, Manavudu, Paschatapa Padataku, Naraputuduka, Aina Mata Ichi, Chiye Kuduna. Imagine, Jesus Christ, these are the words of Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and sisters. He says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. God is not a man to lie. So if you have anything in your life that is out of hand, call him right now. Claim this promise. That is why I tell people, read the Bible. It is the greatest way to communicate with God. Believe me, God has done great miracles in my life. Two years ago, I read the Bible. Two years, I did not take up one single film. Not a single film. I just kept meditating on the Word of God for two years continuing. And God spoke to me when I started seeking and finding Him. God opened so many things. God revealed such great things. God anointed me with the gift of tongues with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I love God with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my mind, with my soul, with my spirit. And He knows it when I say this. You know, I love God because without Him, nothing I can do. But I can say, I can do all things through Him. But when it comes to me, I cannot do anything. But when it comes to Him, I say, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. And today that is my testimony. Today I'm able to do all these things. I'm able to enjoy life. I'm so much at peace. I have so much of joy. I have no fear. I have no doubt. I do not lack anything. Believe me when I say, I do not lack anything. I mean I do not lack anything. I have a great relationship with my Father with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. 
So give your time to the Lord. Read the gospel. Meditate on the word. Because this is good news. You know, every time we pick up the phone, somebody calls, they might not give you good news always. But every time you open this book, it's only good news. It can only give you good news and nothing else. It can only bless you, nothing else. It will not curse you, or it will not humiliate you, or it will not put you to shame, but it will glorify you. It will lift you higher than you can imagine. Call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Great and mighty things, says God. When I call to friends, they will not show me great things. They will show me the word. They will give me nothing but just empty words which mean nothing. But when I open the word of God and I call of God, He gives me the kingdom of heaven and His blessings. So spend time with the word of God. As I spend time, I boast not in myself, but I boast in the Lord as Paul says. Today I boast in the Lord that I am whatever I am is because of Jesus Christ. So, you know, God has been so kind to me, so graceful, so forgiving, so faithful in everything that I have asked for. He has never let me down. He has never let me. He has blessed me to be one of the most beautiful wife. I'm so blessed. Believe me when I say I am blessed. I am truly blessed with one of the most. You know, I always say, God, I would love to have somebody like a mother in my life. And that's exactly what God gave me. You know, every time you ask, you have to be specific of your needs. God is a specific God. You have to be specific. I'll give you a small example and I'll close. It was in America, there was this 80 year old pastor. You know, and this boy comes to him and he says, uh, Pastor, could you pray for me? He says, yes, and what do I pray for? He says, I need a job. He says, what kind of job? Oh, anything. And the pastor goes, oh God, I pray that you give him a shoe polishing job. <laughs> and this boy is like, what did he pray for, Pastor? He said, pray for anything. And that's what came to my mind. <coughs> and he says, no, Pastor, I, 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 I'm a uh, you know, software engineer. And uh, you know, I've done computers and I'm looking for... That is what I was asking. He said, what kind of job are you looking for? Be specific. And be specific with your needs to God. Don't generalize. Don't generalize. Be specific. If that is the most important thing, you hold on to that and ask God. Be specific. One at a time. Not a shopping list. <laughs> right? One thing at a time. And hold on to that. God will bless you. And you will not believe that He will give you something bigger and better than what you have asked for. Today He has given me so much that everywhere I go, people acknowledge me. And that day, when I was, you know, without my father and mother, and I was lying in my deathbed, you know, the world hated me. They put me aside. But when God caught me and helped me, the whole world recognizes me. You know, God is amazing. God is the most wonderful God. Believe me, Jesus Christ can do everything and anything in your life. We just have to ask. I ask and I'm blessed. And you know, I'm so humble for all you people sitting so patiently, listening uh, to the testimony that God has given me. And I'm so blessed to be here. And uh, thank you, especially uh, for your prayers. Thank you. And that meant a lot. You know, I was really tired. I had tears, but I'm a little emotional guy. But uh, when she said that uh, she almost cried and prayed for my salvation, you know, it really touched my heart. Uh, thank you for all you people who have been praying for me, for my family. And, uh, you know, I, I really cherish this day, this moment that, uh, you know, God has given me. And thank you for your wonderful time. Uh, God bless you all. And you people have been so great. And I'm really humbled. And I thank you all. God bless you all. Thank you. Amen.